I think it's safe to say that we have all been feeling just like all of these emotions that we never felt before like 2020 right like when the heck did i start feeling anxious why am i crying like on a random wednesday what's up guys welcome back to my channel if you are a subscriber and you're back again thank you if this is your first time tuning into my video welcome how you doing what's up on this channel you're gonna find videos about dance fitness lifestyle um and everything in between random whatever i want to talk about so today we're going to be talking a little bit about ways that i deal with anxiety stress and sadness so i'm not going to use the word depression just because a lot of people do use that word and may feel like they're depressed but maybe haven't been clinically diagnosed so it's easy you know to sometimes mix up general sadness with depression so i'm not going to use the word depressed um, i'm going to say sadness and that's totally normal based on like what's been going on the past two years right a lot of us probably just feel feelings of sadness from time to time Okay, so let's jump right in. So one of the first ways that I deal with anxiety, stress, or sadness is physical activity. Physical activity can be a number of things. It could be pretty much whatever makes you feel good, right? Whatever is going to help your brain or your body release those endorphins and kick off positive thoughts, positive energy, right? That's what we really need. That's what we're looking for when we're stressed out or when we're anxious. We need to give our body a response to bring in those happy thoughts. One of my favorite forms of physical activity would be dancing, obviously. I always, always, always feel amazing after a class or just like at home. You can just literally put on music in your house and just freestyle, dance it out, just get your body moving. So I started yoga, I wanna say maybe five years ago, four years ago. Um, and I started taking it at one of the gyms that I used to teach at when I taught Zumba. And I would take it like directly after my class on a Monday night. It was like the last class of the day at the gym and it was just so relaxing. I don't wanna give the impression that like yoga is just like, hmm, and like relaxing. It's not just that, like you're moving your body in ways that sometimes if you've never taken yoga, you don't even know that your body can move those ways. And you're building strength, right? You're really focusing. You're taking that time to really just tap into exactly how your body feels, exactly what your body needs at that time. It's just like a mind-body connection. So um, yoga has definitely been one of my top five ways to deal with when I'm feeling anxious and stressed. I just have incorporated it into like my everyday schedule. Like every single morning it's tapped in, wake up, do at least 10 minutes. If I can get like 20 to 30, that's great. And then at night, if Another way to deal with anxiety is sometimes to just take breaks, right? Just take time for yourself away from social media, away from your phone, away from people, and I'm not saying to like completely isolate yourself. Sometimes like, especially, you know, with how social media is nowadays where like you're seeing people's lives or you're seeing a part of people's lives that they want you to see. People are showing the best of their, their lives on social media in most cases, right? They're really showing like the highlights. So sometimes like just seeing everyone posting highlights and like maybe you're you're dealing, you know, with a lot of emotions at a time or um, you feel like you're not where you're supposed to be or you're just having like a time where you're being hard on yourself being on social media could be very very challenging if you are dealing with feelings of anxiety and stress it just becomes so easy to start comparing yourself comparing your life to other people sometimes you really just need to take a step back and focus on you and realize like what the root of you know your anxiety is it's not being mean to take time for yourself you can have people in your life who drain you there's a, I feel like there's always like that one person that's just like blah, 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 just like about their day or like something that they're going through or something that happened to them without even being like, 
hey, how are you? Like, is this a good time to talk? Can I vent right now? And that could be a lot. Someone like completely coming and like bombarding you with their issues and their stress and their anxiety, like while you're already trying to deal with your ish, it could be a lot. You know what I do? I mute them. <laughs> I mute people and in real life and on social media, text, whatever. Sometimes you just have to turn the notifications off, right? And get back to people when you get back to them. Wait until the next day where you can have a better conversation and be more present to that person instead of just like responding to them and just being super short. You do want to be a good friend, you know, to your, your friends as well. So if they're going through something and they want to have an outlet or they want to vent to you you should feel like you're in a space where you could be responsive and you could give them that time and that energy but if you're drained and you're going through things and your mind is just not there and you're not in the mental capacity to like deal with someone else's problems like you need to just give it space and sometimes it's okay to just respond like hey like I'm just not in the mental capacity to deal with this right now. Can I hit you up later? Can we talk tomorrow? They're gonna respect that. And if they don't respect that, they're probably not a good friend. You probably don't want them around. A lot of people are selfish in the sense where like, they just wanna vent to you. They wanna be able to vent to you and they want you to be like that shoulder for them like to cry on or to give them advice but when it comes to your own dealings and things and life instances and things that you're going through like they're nowhere to be found you gotta really like look out for those people and evaluate the, your friendships and people in your circle so let's talk about podcasts for a little bit um i got into podcasts maybe like four years ago and i love podcasts like I feel like I'm literally sitting in the same room sometimes as like the people that I listen to and it, it just feels like a conversation right if you could really find a podcast that you feel like you are engaging in that conversation and you find yourself like nodding agreeing like clapping laughing um i listen to on purpose by jay shetty love it it's really focused on like health physical health mental health all of that another podcast that i listen to is the read with crystal and kid fury they are so funny but they're also advocates for mental health and therapy which i love and then finally, I listened to Small Doses with Amanda Seals. You guys all know Amanda Seals. She's been on Insecure. She's been on The Real. But amazing podcast. Amazing podcast. So massage therapy is another way that you can deal with all your stress, releasing tension out of your body, relaxing. So I actually used to work at a massage place when I was like... 19 20 i don't remember i was like front desk that's when i really like started realizing like how beneficial it really is and how amazing you feel after your body is going to tell you when it needs certain things when your body is dehydrated it's going to tell you when your body's stressed you're going to feel it when you need to stretch you're going to feel it a lot of the time you just need to tap in and listen to what your body's telling you to do so you know when people are like you need to take a chill pill, you just need to take a couple breaths. That's real advice. Your breath can literally make a difference in just like how your whole body feels, right? You could go from literally your, your heart is beating super fast because you feel anxious about something or you're nervous about something. Literally, if you take 10 seconds to just breathe, right? Really slow down your breath, you're literally gonna feel a difference in your heart rate and you're gonna feel more relaxed your body's gonna literally just regulate all of those those emotions and those feelings right so just really practicing your breath and being aware of your breath um, is so important So another way to deal with stress and anxiety would be to set a mood. Set a mood in your home, right? So your home should be your sanctuary. You should feel safe. You should feel um, relaxed when you're home. It's your safe haven. Candles for mood, right? Pick a scent that you really, really like. I love me some home goods for the candles, y'all. Just go in there and like smell the can. It's hard now with the mask, but like... 
I also use Scentsy, so my sister is like a Scentsy representative. I'm gonna like put the link below. But Scentsies are like, they're like wax basically. They come in like amazing different um, fragrances and oh, they're just amazing. And then you could buy like a little like lamb that. I'm not trying to sell Scentsy by the way, but I'm just letting y'all know I love Scentsy for my home. But yeah, you just wanna set the mood, make sure it smells good, make sure the lighting is good. I use light bulbs where you can change the color, change the setting to really just like set a mood. I think this light, yeah, this light is pink back here. Decorate your house so that you love it, right? You should love where you live. Even if the outside of your house looks crazy and there's people on the street doing God knows what, make sure the inside of your house is good, right? Make sure, make sure that you feel nice and safe and zen when you walk into your house and that will really help with your mood if you wake up also to like a clean house making your bed in the morning it makes a difference because then you come home later or you go in your bedroom and you're like why didn't i make my bed i'm such a slob and then that adds to your anxiety like oh i gotta clean you know so just do little things that you can keep your space clean So last but not least, I would definitely recommend for you guys to do something fun. Do something fun, right? I think sometimes like when we're in funks and we're not feeling things and we're not feeling other people, sometimes we're just like, eh, I don't want to go out. I'm just going to chill at home. And that's fine. Sometimes you just need to be still and think and write down your thoughts, journal. But sometimes you just need to get out. Like I was like in a little bit of a funk like last week and my friend invited me to like um some event and i at first i said no i was like nah, i don't know it's sunday like no and then i thought about it, i'm like why am i not going again like and i had a great time when i went and i felt so much better the next day like sometimes you just need that time to get your mind off whatever you're stressing about whatever is making you feel anxious just go out have a good time and it doesn't need to be like oh i need to go out and get drunk or i need to go out and like party till 4 a.m doing something fun could be going to the beach it could be going to an amusement park it could be hiking don't be boring i hope you guys found this video super helpful today and if you aren't already incorporating some of these things into your daily routine or your daily schedule just to prevent or manage um, those feelings we're not gonna feel a hundred percent every single day it's up to us to make sure that we are taking care of our mental physical emotional well-being and doing the best that we can to feel good so thank you guys so much for tuning in if you are not already subscribed please hit that subscribe button and i will see y'all in the next video